Oh man, am I excited. It's Arts and Crafts Day. We finally get to hang these on this. This is a project that I've been itching to tackle for a super long time. And to be honest with you, I have no good reason as to why I haven't tackled it yet. It's super easy, surprisingly cheap, and it's gonna be a fantastic and convenient way to organize the things that we want immediate access to on the side of our bed rack, outside of our rig, and it's gonna keep it nice and dry. So let's go ahead, dive in, and explore what we chose as our rack boxes, why we chose them, and how we're gonna attach them to the side of the rig so they stay nice and secure and hold up to all the trail use and abuse that we plan on putting them through. Hey, before we go any further, some of you care, so I just wanna put it out there that none of these are sponsored products. We purchase these on our own with our own money based on our own research. There are many cases out there that can accomplish the same thing, and we're gonna attach it to a very specific bed rack. However, I really think these concepts could be applied to just about any overland rig or any vehicle really that you wanna do this to. We think the Husky cases are some of the best options out there. We'll talk you through why we think that is. If you like rigid or you like DeWalt, you can use those things too. All right, so what are we working with here? These are the 22 inch Husky modular build out cases. Uh, they go for about $29 a piece over at Home Depot. That's really not bad. I said that this was gonna be a surprisingly inexpensive project and I'm not lying. I think between the hardware, the two cases and a tube of sealant to seal off the holes that we're gonna drill in here, we're in it for about $75 to $80. I'm pretty impressed with that price tag for all the features and all the flexibility that we're gonna get out of these two cases mounted on the side of the rig. So why Husky? Why did we choose Husky? Well, the biggest reason that these are impact proof and IP65 rated. You can probably see, maybe you can't, they are pretty dirty. We've been putting them through their paces inside the truck bed. They have lived through a tropical storm with all of our clothes in them. We just wanted to see how they would hold up in rain left outside unattended to all of the elements and they did great. Everything was bone dry. It was protected from creatures and animals. I really have nothing bad to say about the cases and the testing that we've done with them. And in that, I feel confident mounting these to the side of the rig, knowing that whatever I put in here is gonna be very well protected. All right, so let's pop it open. Let me show you why this is gonna work out fantastic for what we're trying to do. You have some very rugged metal and molded plastic handles down here that can seal off your case really, really well. It holds it nice and tight. Right up here on the lid itself, you can see an all silicone uh, gasket, this red gasket here, and you have a small ridge that it's gonna fit into down here on the base. But this is gonna do an excellent job of sealing out all your moisture, your dust, your debris. If you're not real familiar with what an IP rating is, the quick down and dirty of it is, it's a rating that they use to apply to items to tell you as a consumer how much dust, debris, and water it can keep out of whatever item it happens to be. In this case, it's the Husky case. The IP65 is an excellent rating applied to this case. It's basically saying that it's gonna keep out all the dust, the debris, and any of the water that we would encounter doing what we're doing out of the case. You'll start to see some water intrusion if you take this thing down to some deep levels for some long periods of time. It will start to seep in there. I don't plan on making the Jeep into a submarine, so this is gonna work out awesome. We can see we have a reinforced lid here. That's important because this is gonna be the side that impacts all the branches and trees and things like that when we're going down the trail. So that should hold up really, really nicely. And then we have about a six and a half inch deep area that we can pack full of stuff. And that's gonna be awesome for what we plan to use it for. If I have piqued your interest in this particular case and you are thinking about using it in a similar fashion as we are, but you're curious about the dimensions, I'll link all this in the description below so you can find it right from the Home Depot website. But it is 22.44 inches long, 16.57 inches wide, six and a half inches deep, and it is gonna be the perfect size to line two of them up side by side on the side of our rig. You can see on the bottom, we have some more reinforcements. That's gonna come in handy when it's bouncing down on the side of the rig. And the last thing I wanna hit on is locking your cases when they're on the side of your rig. I know a lot of people are security conscious and they wanna make sure that whatever items that are, that are in here are nice and secure. It's uh, hard to see at first, but right here on the side of the handle is a pass-through area that fits a lock perfectly. So you can, in fact, lock these cases when they're on the side of your rig. All right, so what is the game plan here? How are we gonna attach our awesome cases to the side of the rig so they're nice and secure and they're not gonna fall off to the use and abuse going down the trail? Well, we got some quarter 20, two inch long connecting bolts. We wanted the nice flat edge on there. Hopefully you can see that. So we could get a bead of sealant underneath so we can seal out the holes that we drill in the case. 
We don't want to do anything that's going to negate the IP65 rating of the case itself. So we're going to take all precautions to seal off the holes that we drill. So we're going to use five of those on each case, four corners, middle. I think that's going to do a really good job of holding this nice and secure. We also have to make sure we don't overload the cases with weight, but I think we're going to be fine. We have some nuts, bolts, washers, and lock washers. And then we're also going to use some Permatex sealant to seal out those holes. Like I said, this is going to be our gasket material. The only thing left to do is to do what we do to make it do what it does. So let's get going. Okay, let's get started. I figured the best way to attack this problem to make sure that the cases are mounted both square horizontally and laterally is to pop the molly panel off the side of the rack itself. Lay it on the back side of the cases so we can make sure that everything is square. We're gonna mark our holes, drill them, and then we'll be ready to go ahead and mount these on the side of the rack. I'm just using a regular ballpoint pen. I think that's gonna work out just fine. I can see through the holes that it is marking the back side of the cases. So I should be able to properly index my drill bit on those marks so we're nice and square. All right, quick and easy holes are drilled. The pen did a great job of marking it on the back of the black cases. Really visible, really easy to see. We talked about the fact that these aren't center, uh, but it's just gonna uh, allow us to distribute the weight a little bit more evenly on the cases themselves, allow the load to be carried more centrally. That's gonna keep our cases mounted to the rig and not shake off in any one direction. So I think that even though they're not centered, they're gonna serve their purpose really well. And then we're gonna go ahead and start installing some of these bolts in a way that makes sure that we can keep the IP65 rating of this thing or as close to it as possible. I realize now that we've drilled holes in it, it can no longer be rated like that, but we're gonna do the best we can. All right, so the holes are tight for the screw and that's on purpose. We wanted to make sure that we can thread them through and that's gonna kind of keep the weather and the dust out on top of our sealant that we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and begin. What we're gonna do is we're going to use these large washers. Hopefully you can see them on top of our connecting bolts, our two and a half inch connecting bolts. What I wanna use the large washers for is to help distribute some of that load uh, as this thing kind of bounces down the trail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some sealant on the backside of this connecting uh, flathead and the washer and run that through. The goal here isn't to use a whole bunch, but it is to make sure that you have a solid line all the way around to seal off any weather intrusion that might come uh, through the space that we've created. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna push that through our first hole. Like so. Just repeat the process for the additional four holes and I'll show you what we're gonna do on the back side to kind of sandwich this all together and make it nice and weatherproof. Our center bolt is gonna be a little bit longer and slightly different. Uh, the only reason for that is the hardware store ran out of the other ones that we're using. I think this is gonna be fine. You don't need to change your bolt up for the center one if you don't want to. All right, let's go ahead and flip this case around and show you how we're gonna finish off the back side of this. Thing. And the idea here is that we're gonna take washers, a lock washer and a nut, do the same gasket material and sandwich the two washers together uh, through the case, creating a tight bond for water intrusion and dust intrusion, but also creating a more stable area for load capacity. We have an issue though, is call it lack of foresight, call it lack of planning, but some of these spots don't leave room for the washers. I can still get the lock washer and the nut in there just fine. We have two choices to make. We can either take a Dremel tool and recess some of this plastic out, uh, enough to fit the washer in, or we can leave it how it is, throw the lock washer and the nut and some gasket material on there and see how it does. Uh, I am afraid of removing some of the uh, reinforcing plastic around this thing and creating some weak spots that are maybe gonna crack otherwise. So I'm gonna leave the plastic where it is for now. I'm going to throw the lock washer and the nut and the silicone on top of it. We'll just keep an eye on it, we'll keep it monitored. If it starts letting water in or the plastic is cracking from load capacity, then at that point we'll readdress the issue, maybe reevaluate how we're gonna do this. These cases are cheap enough that I have a little wiggle room to, to maybe break one or maybe uh, screw this project up a little bit. And I'll obviously keep you updated on how this all goes, but I think that's the plan for right now.
Man, what I tell you, quick, easy, cheap, most importantly, fun little project that's gonna pay dividends with how we get the rig organized on our next adventure. And I cannot wait to get out there and start putting them to use. But quick pro tip, don't put anything wet away in the cases. Uh, it will cause it to mold and we don't want that. So if you have to get it out of there as soon as possible, dry it all off, air those things out and you'll stop the mold in its tracks. Otherwise those things don't breathe and it's gonna be a breeding ground for it. I really hope that this gave you some ideas and some things that you can do if you're looking to tackle this project as well. Don't be intimidated quick and easy, just like I had said. But hey, listen, don't forget to like and subscribe. Everything we talked about is gonna be down in the description and I cannot wait to see you guys out on the trail.